The global pandemic of COVID-19 had brought unprecedented cooperation amongst mankind and it has also brought about the surge in an ugly side of human nature, pandemic racism. Many Asians had reported experiencing racism in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. Coronavirus racism is unhelpful and distracts people from the more important task of stopping the pandemic. According to the World Health Organization, WHO, social stigma in the context of health is the negative association between a person or group of people who share certain characteristics and a specific disease. In an outbreak, this may mean people are labeled, stereotyped, discriminated against, treated separately, and or experience loss of status because of a perceived link with a disease. Such treatment can negatively affect those with the disease, as well as their caregivers, family, friends and communities. People who don't have the disease but share other characteristics with this group may also suffer from stigma. The current COVID-19 outbreak has provoked social stigma and discriminatory behaviors against people of certain ethnic backgrounds as well as anyone perceived to have been in contact with the virus. Back in 2015, the WHO had issued a statement on the best practices for naming new human infectious diseases. WHO called on scientists, national authorities and the media to follow best practices in naming new human infectious diseases to minimize unnecessary negative effects on nations, economies and people. In recent years, several new human infectious diseases have emerged. The use of names such as swine flu and Middle East Respiratory Syndrome has had unintended negative impacts by stigmatizing certain communities or economic sectors, says Dr. K.G. Fukuda, Assistant Director General for Health Security, WHO. This may seem like a trivial issue to some, but disease names really do matter to the people who are directly affected. We've seen certain disease names provoke a backlash against members of particular religious or ethnic communities, create unjustified barriers to travel, commerce and trade, and trigger needless slaughtering of food animals. This can have serious consequences for people's lives and livelihoods. Diseases are often given common names by people outside of the scientific community. Once disease names are established in common usage through the internet and social media, they are difficult to change, even if an inappropriate name is being used. Therefore, it is important that whoever first reports on a newly identified human disease uses an appropriate name that is scientifically sound and socially acceptable. The best practices apply to new infections, syndromes, and diseases that have never been recognized or reported before in humans, that have potential public health impact, and for which there is no disease name in common usage. They do not apply to disease names that are already established. The best practices state that a disease name should consist of generic descriptive terms, based on the symptoms that the disease causes e.g. respiratory disease, neurologic syndrome, watery diarrhea, and more specific descriptive terms when robust information is available on how the disease manifests, who it affects, its severity or seasonality e.g. progressive, juvenile, severe, winter. If the pathogen that causes the disease is known, it should be part of the disease name, e.g. coronavirus, influenza virus, salmonella. This is why the world should use COVID-19 as the disease's name to stop the racism that is fueled by the pandemic. The world has a real chance to make a difference and to make the world a better place from this point onwards. Will you join us in using the right name for the disease and to make the world a better place? We would like to thank the WHO for the above message and the global leadership in helping mankind to manage past pandemic, this current pandemic and future pandemics as viruses evolve all the time. A big thank you to WHO. Stay tuned for the latest updates in future episodes.